go. Welcome. This is the Jenkins Governance Board meeting. Today is the 5th of August, 2024. Um, we know that Bruno won't be joining us today. And I'm not sure about Uli and uh, Alex. So we'll list them as not attending for right now. Great. All right. So items that I've got upcoming calendar. This Wednesday, we have a security release for weekly and for Jenkins LTS. And by way of reminder, the next governance board meeting won't be in four weeks. It will be in six because in four weeks, we would be on a U.S. holiday weekend. And in terms of upcoming events, we've got the board and officer elections that are now in progress. The announcement blog post has been made and uh, nominations are being received. We've also got the CD Mini Summit sponsored by the Continuous Delivery Foundation in Vienna, Austria in September and DevOps World sponsored by CloudBees in September. Uh, people are welcome to vote or register and the Jenkins Governing Board and Jenkins officers will actually be doing a report and Q&A session at DevOps World. So that, uh, that release is coming up on Wednesday, right? It is. That's correct. Yeah. So okay. Wednesday, the 7th of August. Yeah. So two cool. days from now. Yep, exactly. All right. So we've got those upcoming releases. Be aware of them. The release on Wednesday will actually also include 2.452.4 because it's a security release. And that was already shared in the announcement. Then One of thanks. the rare dot fours. Go ahead. One of the rare dot fours that we've seen. Exactly. And and the usual, the the most recent reasons for dot fours have been exactly this: that we do a dot four because we don't want to risk that someone can't install a security update because of some other intervening change. Yeah. Good. All right. Thanks to Google Summer of Code for their work on uh on thanks to Google for their donation that allows it. And thanks to the five mentors and the five uh, participants, the five contributors, we are approaching within the next three weeks, the end of Google Summer of Code. And we'll see a final presentation late September or early or late August or early September. Thanks to all the, all those participants. In terms of action items, Basel and I are running the 24, 2024 elections. And Basel, you had this item on the attribution entries for the downloads page. I assume that's still in progress? Yeah, it's still on my to-do list. Is there something that I can help with for the uh, election process besides, I know you've already written the blog post. Uh, if, you can, if you can be watching for and encouraging people to be nominated, that would be great. Right now, the the results that we've got there are that, here I can show what the current status is, is we've got five candidates nominated for the Jenkins board position, but we've only got one candidate for each officer position. So there will be an election because we've got more candidates than we have positions for the board. So that's good. So we'll run the election, but I think it's just a matter of watching and looking for if there's anyone who would like to be nominated for one or more of the, the officer positions. Okay. Thanks, thanks for asking. Uh, Kevin Martins had the action item to retire the Chinese Jenkins site. Again, on community.jenkins.io in the last two weeks, we've had another Chinese user saying, hey, look, these instructions are out of date and they're correct. They are. They're just, they're, they're plain and simply wrong when it comes to installation in Chinese language. Kevin's scheduled to be back the 19th of August, and we'll look to do the removal sometime after that. This was still, this was still, if you, if I remember correctly, this was waiting on the ability to redirect uh, the old URLs to the new ones. Correct. We want okay. to be able to, to move from we want someone who clicks through a Chinese URL to be taken to the corresponding English language site so that they don't just get a broken link. Yeah. So have we created the, the mappings yet and we just need to figure out how to uh, deploy them or is that, um, or have we not yet 
created the URL mappings? Haven't haven't created the URL mappings okay. in part because we think there's a hint in the Kubernetes stuff that will allow us to do the mat the mappings in bulk. Right. So we won't have to do individual page mappings. It can be a, a relatively smaller thing. Damien was hinting that that's available, but we've got to do the tests ourselves before we're ready to connect with Damien. And this is, this is like some Nginx server or something? Exactly. Okay. I think there's an Nginx right at the right at the root level and we just do a redirect through it, but it needs it needs proof that we're doing it the right way. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think you can do redirects at either layer, at either the Kubernetes layer or the Nginx layer. So the, the latter might be easier to test locally. Ah, okay. So Nginx, so you're thinking that Nginx might be simpler and then we could test it, test it even possibly without having to do a Kubernetes setup for our development environment. I don't know about, yeah, I don't know about an end-to-end -end test, but um, mm. you could certainly do a more basic test to validate the, the Nginx syntax and then, um, then when there's real end-to-end -end tests later, that could be, you, you basically have skipped a few steps already by, you know, you'd be starting with syntax that you know is working. And then it's just a matter of putting it in the right place in our, in our production configuration and testing that. But anyway, that might just be a place to start. I have done a lot, I've done a lot of, uh, work in the past with URL redirection, um, the, uh, the original Swiss Army knife for this was mod rewrite for Apache, right? Um, and that was that was great. I still have very positive recollections of that. You could basically redirect anything with that, and I'm sure that Nginx can do the same thing, um, probably in a different way. But um, no, I think it is important to keep these URLs working. Just um, if anything, to keep our uh, our high search rankings and things like that. Right. Right, exactly. That, well, and and the, the, there are a lot of Chinese users. There are a, a lot of Chinese users. It would be sad to have their experience be very bad in this right. transition. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thanks very much. Anything else on the Retire the Chinese site? No. Okay. On Contributor Spotlight, we continue to get more contributor spotlight entries. We are now at the well past six months worth of contributor spotlights created every two weeks like clockwork. Thanks very much to Alyssa Tong, to Bruno Verachten and to Chris Stern. It's, it's been great. And we've got this random contributor thanks that is up and running. It's first visible on the contributor spotlight site little text at the bottom of the page that says thanks to and picks a random contributor for their contribution to thing they contributed to. Cool. Uh, now on governance topics, the governance board, the nominations and elections process have started. So Uli and Alex will be done in December with their current term. Uh, two positions available for election in the term for theirs and all officer positions are up for election in that same term. So actually, let's put it that, let's phrase this differently. Governance board permissions are like this. There we go, that's more accurate. Okay. And Basel, you and I are the committee. We've got five candidates nominated for the board and one candidate for each of the officer positions. Cool. Then the, the big one that's getting a, an awful lot of my attention and your attention, Basel, is Spring Security 6 upgrade. Uh, maybe you want to give a, a summary here of what's what's happening, and I can I can just take notes. Sure, sure. Um, there, uh, there are two uh, tests that we've been doing in PCT, um, and you can see the test results publicly. Uh, we've been testing phase three and phase four. Um, the results are looking good. Uh, so we've got a number of plugins that have been adapted proactively for this transition and some that uh, are going to be released in lockstep with the weekly release that upgrades to Jetty 12. So some, some plugins can be adapted proactively and some can't. Um, we're hoping to get the Jetty 12 upgrade in a weekly uh, next week on Tuesdays uh, weekly. Um, 
I think it's August 13th or some thereabouts. Um, and that's going to be kind of the first major step of these four phases. Um, um, there's still one more plugin that needs to be adapted, which is HTTP request. So um, we're hoping to get that adapted in the amount of time between next Tuesday and the next bomb release, ideally. Um, and if not, then we can we can do it later, but we'll have to turn the test off to do the next bomb release successfully. Um, so that's really the kind of the most um, the most pending work for phase three. Otherwise, all of the core changes are finished, and I am planning to post the the final core pull request later today to um, to kind of start the process of merging that towards the August 13th weekly. Um, but yeah, this is looking pretty good. Otherwise the tests are passing, CloudBeast tests are looking good for this. Um, so we're feeling pretty confident that we can deliver this in the, the next week or two um, in the weekly timeframe. So the big, the big one is phase four. And again, the pull requests are, prepared here. Um, this is going to need a little more security attention and, um, uh, but otherwise it's much of the same thing. So I don't think we have particular date in mind yet, but that's going to be coming up shortly after the EE8 upgrade to the weekly releases. Um, on the cloud B side, we're running some of our internal tests against this change, but so far we haven't found anything that would cause us to um, to not proceed with this upgrade. Um, so that's that's going to that's going to be the change with the compatibility layer and um, it's going to upgrade all of the remaining libraries, including spring and spring security. So um, but yeah, the on the on the Jenkins core side, all of the code is finished uh, and it's been tested with PCT and ATH. So Really, we're we're just waiting for for more, um, for more end to end testing, for more dog fooding, and to get some of these other things flushed through the pipeline, uh, including the previous phases, um, and as you mentioned, the security release that's coming up this week. So a lot of a lot of stuff that's in in motion and that's going to land soon, but sort of in a holding pattern uh, until we get some of the previous work uh, deployed onto the weekly release line. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah. So I've, I've been running this interactively for, I think six or eight weeks now in various stages. And I'm, I'm quite pleased with how well it's working in, in my environment. Thanks very much for your work on it. And thanks for everyone else who's worked it. Anything else that you wanted to highlight there? Yeah, no, that's it's just uh, it's going to be coming soon, but it should basically be a non-event. I mean, um, our goal, if we if you notice something, then we've done something wrong. Uh, so that's that's kind of my philosophy. Um, there will you know, there will need to be uh, you will need to upgrade core and a few plugins at the same time, like the LDAP plugin and core will need to be upgraded at the same time for this to work. Um, but I mean, the same was true for Guava, the Guava right, upgrade, exactly. and a number of other uh, transitions we've done, like the CG like upgrade, the... et cetera. So this is along the same lines as that. Um, our... Oh, I, oh the, I guess the one thing I should mention is that um, we've we've been, I, I wrote some release notes for uh, the Envinject plugin on mm. Java 17. There have been a number of complaints about that not working fully on Java 17. So uh, I've written some documentation about that and we can include that in the LTS upgrade guide. But basically, um, Envinject is uh, is not gonna work on Java 17 fully. It'll work partially, but not won't work fully on Java 17 unless you add some add opens arguments to your agents. So, um, so that's something that we're planning to document and um, 
it might be possible to fix it fully, but that would be a, a big, much bigger project uh, than what we're willing to bite off right now. Thank you. Thanks very much. So I, I think I'm I think on the buck tracker I've marked like six or seven tickets as duplicates of this. So that that's an indication that a lot of people are are hitting this and maybe even more once we start requiring Java 17 and LTS. So I've I've also pinned my comment in the ticket so that it's at the top. But anyway, if you if you keep seeing duplicates, then you can just redirect people to that comment. Right. Thanks very much. All right. Thanks. Thanks very much. Last topic is relative to expenses. Our Azure expense st status is in budget. Thanks to Damien Duporto, our infrastructure officer and the, the infra team. And we've announced an additional $60,000 donation from Microsoft. Uh, thanks very much to Microsoft for their kindness in donating. AWS credits donation, we've announced that, oops, I got the wrong. Yes, yeah, so we've got AWS credits that we're using as well. We've announced their donation. And we'll start consuming those credits shortly. Uh, we're using the Azure credits for right now. And after the end of this month, we'll switch on further consumption of Amazon credits. I've been, Our, I've been spending credits a lot doing ATH and PCT runs. So I'm glad that we have this funding. Right. Well, and, and seriously, that's been, it's been crucial that we're able to spend testing capacity, right? So this, we're, we're deeply grateful to these, these cloud providers for their donations because we have to be able to run an awful lot of tests and we do run an awful lot of tests and those are not free. So yeah, I agree with you. We are, we are spending more than typically right now in order to be sure that spring security is done well. Thanks yeah, very I mean, much. When I started running ETH with spring security, I think it was uh past like not, it was 10% passing. Right. And at the end of like three days, it was like 50% passing. Of course now it's a hundred percent passing with the LDAP plugin changes. So uh, this, was this was absolutely essential to doing the spring security project. There isn't a lot of um, HTML unit coverage of the code base um, for the UI. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there's some, but um, for the most part, the UI testing is all in ATH and that's, that's the main area of risk in the spring security upgrade. So yeah, we've been making heavy use of, of ATH um, as well as just up updating ATH itself for newer web browsers and things like that. So anyway, uh, this money is being well spent is what I'm saying. Um, yes. We're not, and... we're not, uh, we're not looking for, we're not looking for ways to spend it. We have a lot of usage this month. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and that usage is going to continue intensely through at least mid September and probably into, into October. So yeah, that very good. Now passing fully, and I like I like that. So it's not just that, not just that we're using the compatibility to the plugin compatibility tester to test the plugins individually, but the acceptance test harness with its Selenium based tests have been su very important in terms of discovering problems and letting us fix them so that users don't see those problems. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I think I've told you the story about how. One of my early bugs that I fixed was pipeline jobs would not save, would instead delete the pipeline job definition instead of saving it. Exactly, <laughs> which is which is a, a horrifying thought if that gets to a user, right? That That is certainly not the experience we want a user to have. We want users to, when you save it, it better stay saved. It, it absolutely. I think that was the first bug I fixed out of about 50. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and and that discovery process, it's it's great that ATH helps with that in finding classes of places, typical locations where those kind of things can occur. That's great. Last item is that our AWS credit application has been submitted. We were hoping for an answer in July. We haven't seen it yet. So I think uh, Mark, wait to check further to see, uh, uh, to understand their schedule. I'll... Uh, I'm hoping that they're going to announce that they'll do an additional grant to us, but 
but we'll see. That's all that I had. Anything else, Basil, for you? No. This is all good. right. I'm looking forward to rolling this stuff out starting next Tuesday. So Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. And changes are coming. Thanks very, very much, everyone. We'll call this done for today.